Well, it really comes down to two things. First, there's O'Neill's ultimate vision, and then there's what he was able to test in the lab. He understood that this heating problem would be an issue, and his solution was an intent to make the projectile coil superconducting. I say intent because while he did test superconducting coupling, the superconducting bucket was tested separately, kept cryogenically frozen to confirm strong magnetic coupling, but was never actually flown with the projectile, which used a copper, in O'Neill's own words, ohmic bucket. The second reason he went in on induction launchers rather than a reluctance launcher was that he greatly favored the punchiest package possible, because he envisioned that the mass driver would be assembled in low Earth orbit using something like the space shuttle, and then it would be transferred to low lunar orbit, and then disassembled and decelerated to land on the moon. So because he basically envisioned the entire thing being imported, he favored potency over ISRU simplicity. 